Let's sing a little song with eight little words about a rocket ship and flightless birds. Sigil! Kevin. Three, two, one. Now, come on, we're almost there. Apologize to your brother. Sorry, Jason. I hope you two don't act this way while you're at Grandmom's. Yay, Grandmom's Cottage! Da -da 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 -da. Yay, Grandmom's Cottage. You know, Trevor's at space camp right now. Jason, you'll get to go to space camp after Grandmom's Cottage. You're just gonna need to be patient. I just love Grandmom's Cottage. Are we almost there? You should know where we are, Cupcake. Unless you aren't wearing your glasses again. Hey, hey, hey! We're here! Hello, sweeties! How's my two favorite tweeting pumpkins? Hi, Hi Grandma. Grandma! Oh, that's Grand Mom to you, you little bugs! Oh, you kids are gonna love it here. Your grandfather finished this place when I was about your age. That's right. Built the whole place himself, he did. Quite a man, your granddad. Oh, goodness. Now, which one are you, then? We're not identical twins, Grandmom. Thank goodness. Just remember, I'm the cute one. And I'm the one who's supposed to be at space camp. Okay, that's everything. I'm afraid we have to run or we'll miss our flight. Thanks for watching the kids, Mom. Jason and Michelle, we'll call you when we get there. Have a good trip, and don't you worry about these two. They'll be just fine here. No better place for a kid, you know. That's right. Bye-bye, sweethearts. We love you. Be good for your grandmom. And have fun. Come on, pumpkins. You can give me a hand with supper. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Jason, your mom and I know you'd rather be at space camp right now, so we got you and Michelle something that might make the time go faster. Now be sure you take turns with your sister. We'll call you tonight, buddy. It's a Turtle 3000 game console and the best game in the world, Bunzai Master 3, Pruner of Destiny. It's almost as cool as Space Camp. I just need some tools to hook it up to your, uh, TV. Oh, the telly! Sounds lovely. Sure you can make it work? No job's too hard when you use your head. What's that? It's a Turo 3000. Mom and Dad gave it to us. Are you going to be able to hook it up to that old TV? Sure. It's easy. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Hi! It's done! Is it ready? Whoa-ho-ho-ho! -ho -ho, no. I don't think so. Dad had it to me, and I got it all hooked up, so I get to go first. Hooking it up is half the fun. I get to go first. No way, Michelle. 
I get to go first. Stop it! You're gonna no, push it up! I, I wanna go it first! first. <laughs> Merciful heavens! What's all this then? I can't have my little onions fighting like frogs and dogs now, can I? Look, I'm glad you got a new widget there, but you need to learn to wait your turn to let someone else go first every now and then. It's called patience, and it's a virtue. Now, let's see, what's a good book say? Oh, right! A patient man has great understanding, but a quick-tempered man displays folly. Do you know what folly is? Foolishness! Trouble! Having to go first all the time only leads to trouble. Good things come to those that wait. I couldn't agree more. That's why you should wait your turn. No way, Jason. Besides, I had a controller first. Yes, but I have the controller that's plugged in. Supper's ready. Ooh, it smells even more delicious out here. So, Grandma, what's for dinner? Well, for your first supper here at the cottage, I thought I'd fix you one of your granddad's favourites. Pie! Pie for dinner? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sometimes we'd have it thrice a week. Do they always serve pie for dinner in England? Oh, no. Not always. Some folks serve bangers and mash, a bubble and squeak or haggis. Haggis? Oh, nasty stuff. Mostly hearts and lungs. Sticks to the roof of your mouth like skunk bottom. Now there's a dish you don't try more than once. I know this one kid who ate frog brains. With a little butter and salt. Not bad, really. Frog brains. Um, what kind of pie is this, anyway? Why, it's kidney pie, dearie. Kidneys? Real kidneys? Grandmom, would it be okay if I just went upstairs to play? I'm not really hungry anyway. We stopped at Burger Bell on the way up. Yeah, me too, Grandmom. Well, all right, sweeties. I was hoping to show you my collectibles. But that can wait till morning, I suppose. Thanks, Grandmom. Yeah, thanks. You be careful with those, Pumpkin. Your granddad gave those to me on our honeymoon in the Falklands. I always knew how to make me smile, he did, your granddad. Oh, if only he was here to see his little granddaughter playing with the penguins he got me on our honeymoon in the Falklands. Oh, well, good memories, all that matters. Thanks, Grandma. I'll be careful. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Oh, goodies, my oh. <gasps> Space Commander Jason here. I'm stranded on a hostile planet with absolutely nothing to do or eat. You look very handsome today, Mr. Penguin. And you look beautiful in that new dress, Miss Penguin. Did you borrow it from Miss Pretty Pretty? I beg your pardon. Miss Pretty Pretty borrows clothes from me. Thank you very much. Did you bring any comic books? Why, well, I don't believe I did, Mr. Jason. I mostly read magazines from Paris on account of me being a supermodel. I'm gonna die here. Did you say you speak French, Miss Penguin? Oui, oui, I do indeed quite well, Mr. Penguin. Wow, beautiful and sophisticated. You're an amazing penguin, Miss Penguin. Wow, merci ever so much, Mr. Penguin. <laughs> Jason? <laughs> you almost killed me! There was a ring. It was hanging. <laughs> so I jumped. Then the stairs fell from the sky. I wonder where they go. 
Oh, no, you don't, Jason T. Conrad. You put those right back in the ceiling before Grandmom comes up here. I think you have to pull these shut from the top. I'll go try. Okay, but you come down just as soon as... But if... Jason! Oh! Greetings, Earthling. Hey, Michelle, look at all this cool stuff. Awesome. The starship Xylem glides gracefully through space. Level 5 Bunzai Master Captain Manolo and his crew of botanists are headed for a distant galaxy flown. But what's that in the distance? Could it be? Oh no! An intergalactic chokeberry. Quick cries, Captain Manolo. Launch dry chlorophylline torpedoes! Choo choo! <laughs> A direct hit! In four to six days, you'll be reduced to wilted stem tissue. Hooray! It's Granddad! Jason, look at this! <laughs> look, it's Granddad! How do you know that's Granddad? Look, here's Grandmom standing in front of this cottage with him. Who else could it be? Wow, cool telescope. I wonder where that picture was taken. I saw it first. No, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. You got to try the video game first. It's an even look. I get to go first. Do not. Stop. You're going to break it. You stop. OK, OK, OK. Look, I'm the oldest. I get to decide. Huh? By five minutes, big whoop. I saw it first. Well, I could decide that you could go first. Yeah? Nah, I've decided I'll go first. <sighs> Wow! Cool! Okay, my turn. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not even close to being done. You'll just have to wait your turn quietly. After a short lunch break, Captain Manolo and his team of botanists resume their search for a perfect bonsai breeding ground. I can't hear you. T. Conrad? Huh? We need your help. You're, you're alive. Of course we are, kid. Yeah. It's much easier to do our jobs that way. Get in here, Jason. The galaxy waits for no man. What? I can't. I'm too big. Ah, too big, too big. When I was your size, I was twice your size. <laughs> Dr. Fidgel, Gleaselin. Yes, right away. I can't believe you guys are alive. Of course we are. Either that or you're daydreaming. 
That's true. Sensors indicate that he could be daydreaming. But no time for small talk now. We've got work to do. What about my sister? Is she coming? Don't worry. She'll get her chance. But right now, you're the one that we need. All right, boys. Strap yourselves in. It could be a bumpy ride. Better than that, Jason. Okay, boys, I think it's time we briefed our new cadet. Now, listen up. I'm Captain Zigil. This is my ship. Over here, we have Dr. Fidgel. How do you do? This is the ship's pilot and engineer, First Officer Midgel. And, um, <clears throat> that's, uh, Kevin. Pleasure. What does he do? Well, mostly he just does that. Okay, so where are we going? We have received a report on our fax machine. The planet Wait Your Turn is in crisis. Wait a minute. You guys get your directions on a fax machine? Yes. Why? No reason. So, what's the crisis? That we don't know. We were low on toner. Let's get on with our mission, boys. Engineer Midgel, engage hyperdrive. Hyperdrive? We're only ten miles away. Can't you read a map? Hmm? Perhaps if he was wearing his glasses. He doesn't wear his glasses because he thinks they make him look silly. That's not true. I, uh, I just don't like the red marks they make on my beak. Great schools of halibut! We've been hit! It's all right. We're okay. We were in the correct landing pattern, but another ship caught right in front of us. Clipped us with his wing. How rude. We'll, uh, have to report this to the local authorities. Let's bring this ship down. Buckle up for landing, everyone. Right, here we go. You can do it, Mitchell. Yes, we believe in you. Hang on. Pretty good one. Spot on. <laughs> Thank you very much. I thought it was rather impressive. Yes, much better than the last one. Wh it felt like the landing gear broke off. Landing gear? Landing gear? Landing gear. You know, that's not a bad idea. It just might work. I think the kid's got something. Landing gear? Mm, no matter. Here we are. Quite. And as the ship's scientist, I should go out first. Oh, uh, as the ship's engineer, I should go first. As captain, I'll go first. As Kevin, could I stay here? All right, mister, if that's your attitude, you can just go first. Hey, not so fast. You can't go out dressed like that. You'll frighten the natives. Ah, 
Come on, everyone. Hey, buddy. You can't just cut in front of me. I didn't just cut in front of you. I also cut in front of him, 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 and him. And while we've been standing here, they've cut in front of us. Kind of old behavior for a planet called Wait Your Turn. They're all cutting in line. They're barbarians. Back to the ship. Well there, Captain. Remember, we've got a job to do. What? Oh, yes. See, look. Kevin stole it already. Get your hands off me, you big look. I, I can't wait. Let me go. Stop it. Be nice. Excuse me, but how long has all this cutting been going on? Oh, it, it all started when President No, I'm the president, took office. Pushed his way in the office, you mean? I see. Well, fear not, good vacuums. We have heard your distress signal, and we are here to help. What? Oh, you're the guys from the Federation. We didn't call about the cut in line. We called you about the heat. Eh, come to think of it, it is awfully hot out here. Like a sauna. Like a barbecue. Like someone's barbecuing in a sauna. It's gotten so bad, we had to cancel our ice sculpture competition. And this would have been the winning entry. It was a swan. It was beautiful. <laughs> Man. Mitchell, key up the satellite viewing system. Find out why it's so hot down here. Hang on. Captain, this planet is in worse trouble than we thought. It's broken out of its normal orbit and it's trying to cut in front of the other planets in its solar system. I know why, Captain. Sensors indicate a cutting-in-line bug infecting the entire planet. Oh, yeah, that's the bug that was introduced into our environment by President No, I'm the president. You don't think that has something to do with all this mess, do you? It's a theory, anyway. And that's not all. In taking itself out of its normal orbit, the planet is now headed directly toward its sun. Don't you people understand? Your planet is headed for the sun. Yeah, but at least we're ahead of all the other planets. The cup is half full, my friend. Why, that is good news. Captain, did you hear that? We're on the planet that's first. <gasps> Penguins, we have to get out of here. The cutting in line bug is infecting us too. Nonsense. But if it is, it infected me first. No, well, I was first. Me, me. You're all being ridiculous. I wanted to cut in front of you hours ago. People. Don't you understand what happens when you get too close to the sun? You burn up! Oh! Oh! To the ship! To the ship! To the ship! Me first! Me first! Me first! We're all gonna die if we keep this up. It could be Roy. Or it could be a clever scam so that he could go first. Wait. Listen to me. We need to learn to wait our turns, to let someone else go first now and then. It's called patience. It's a virtue. I couldn't agree more. That's why you should wait your turn. No, no. Oh, what was that verse? Um, a... A patient man has great understanding, but a quick temper man displays folly. What's folly? Foolishness, trouble. Having to go first all the time only leads to trouble, like getting burned up by the sun. Now, the consequences are not always so extreme, but good things come to those who wait. So, what do we do? After you. <gasps> what happened? You, you told someone else to go first. We haven't heard that since the line started. Jason, you've destroyed the cutting line bug. Not only that, but the planet is returning to its normal orbit. <laughs> Attention, everyone! President Noam, the president, was at the front of the line when the planet abruptly stopped! Where is he now? 
And he was last seen hurling through space over, over there! Uh, he is succeeded by President After You! Hello, citizens. As my first act in office, I would like to officially thank Jason and his penguin friends for saving our beloved planet. Mr. President, I have to ask, what was so important that everyone was cutting in line to see? Why our telescope, Jason? We've discovered the most bizarre creature who appears to be spying on us. Looks like our work here is done. Penguins, let's pack it up. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. 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 Goodb